In this video, we'll be using the conjugate zeros theorem to help us find all of the zeros of a polynomial function given one zero. Recall that the conjugate zeros theorem says that if a plus bi is a zero of our function, then a minus bi is also a zero. The example that we'll be doing is we're asked to find all the zeros of f of x equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 17x squared plus 55x minus 50, given that 2 plus i is a zero. All right. By our conjugate zeros theorem, we also know that 2 minus i is also a zero. Now we know that since this is a fourth degree polynomial, I'll have at most four zeros. I already have two of them, so I'm only going to have to find two zeros. To make our work easier, let's go ahead and divide our function using synthetic division. We'll use 2 plus i as our k value to start with. Um, 4, 3, 2, 1, constant. So I'm not missing any terms. I'll just write my coefficients. 1, negative 1, negative 17, 55, and negative 50. I'll bring down my first term. I have 1. 1 times 2 plus i is 2 plus i. When we add, we get 1 plus i. Now we're going to need to multiply these two numbers together. We do that here. 1 plus i multiplied by 2 plus i. I'll use FOIL. So 2 plus i plus 2i plus i squared. And combine these. This is a negative 1 by definition. So 2 added to negative 1, that gives me a 1, and then plus 3i. So my product of these two numbers is 1 plus 3i. When I add, I get negative 16 plus 3i. I'll need to multiply this negative 16 plus 3i times 2 plus i. Again, I'm going to use FOIL. Negative 32, negative 16i. positive 6i and uh, 3i squared. This is the same as 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. So I have a negative 32 and a negative 3 is negative 35. These two combine to give me a negative 10i. That gets written where the product of these two numbers, negative 35 minus 10i. And when I add here, I get 20 minus 10i. And I have to multiply 
20 minus 10i times 2 plus i. This is 40 plus 20i minus 20i and minus 10i squared. It's to cancel off. This is negative 10 times negative 1, which is a positive 10. So combining 40 and 10, I get 50 here. So the product of these two numbers is a positive 50. Adding these together, we get a 0. Now we knew that that had to be 0 there because they told us 2 plus i is a 0. And if it hadn't turned out to be 0, I would need to check for a, an arithmetic error. All right, now I can uh, divide by 2 minus i. I can use these numbers. Um, I don't have to use the original function. So 2 minus i. And I'm going to use 1, 1 plus i. Negative 16 plus 3i and 20 minus 10i. Write down my first number. 1 times 2 minus i. 2 minus i. And when I add here, the i's cancel and I have 3. 3 multiplied by 2 minus i is 6 minus 3i. When I add these, the 3i and the negative 3i cancels, and I have just a negative 10. And then multiplying negative 10 by 2 minus i gives me negative 20 plus 10i. And so again, we can see that these both cancel, and I have a zero remainder. Which I knew had to happen because 2 minus i is also a zero. Now let's look at what we have left here. We still have two more zeros that we need to find. Um, this was x to the fourth. So we know that this polynomial is going to be x cubed, and then x squared, and then x, and then our constant. So since I divided this x cubed, this one will be x squared and then x, and then minus 10. So I'm left with x squared plus 3x minus 10. I can factor this easily to get my other two zeros. I have x in the first two positions, and then 5 times 2 will give me 10. I need my largest product to be positive because this term is positive. So my 5x will be positive and my 2x will be negative. So to find our 0 here, x plus 5 equals 0. We see that x equals negative 5. Or you can think of this as x minus a negative 5, and that will give you your negative 5 there. And then this one, we can see that x equals 2. So I have this is one of my zeros. This is another one. And then I have x equals 2 plus or minus i. That will be two more zeros. So I have a total of four zeros here.